invitation and it's for me a great honor to have the possibility to share the, our data and uh, what uh, interferon represents for MS passion. And uh, in fact, this is my conflict of interest. And so you see there are different companies, so it means that we have not only interferon as a drug for uh, for uh, or, or three that uh, the MS passion, but uh, for sure interferon beta has been the, the first who really changed the life of our passion. This is uh, a commentary of uh, Professor Arnazon on the first paper in 1993, who showed, as uh, already has been said by Salvetti, that the interferon beta was effective in uh, multiple uh, sclerosis patients. So, uh, interferon beta for uh, our patient is particularly interesting because it's, of course, a cytokine. And uh, what is very important is that it's very similar to natural interferon beta. And uh, for this reason, it uses the same metabolic pathways for the natural interferon beta. But what is important for, from the clinical point of view is that it is possible to monitor in vivo in every single patient the biological activity of interferon beta. And uh, of course, everybody of you, of you know very well what interferon beta is doing, but what is important for us is that it can induce the sharp increase of some genes and in particular of uh, MXA in the peripheral blood uh, lymphocyte monocyte of our patient. And uh, in this way, we can measure the biological activity of interferon. And uh, the biological activity is a uh, wall modification of what is done by a drug that interacts with its uh, receptor. And uh, biological activity is a necessary but not sufficient condition for clinical efficacy of a drug. But of course, a drug that has no biological activity is not effective. So what we have done is uh, to measure uh, MXA in, uh, in the patient who are treated with interferon beta. We could measure the protein, but we focus on messenger RNA. And uh, we took inspiration for doing this work uh, by what has been already done by Antonelli, thank you, Guido, that has done the similar work in a patient treated with interferon alpha uh, with hepatitis C. And so we simply uh, use the same idea in MS fashion. So what is clear is that when we inject interferon beta, there is a, a induction of biological activity, then something happens, an immunomodulatory antiviral, antiproliferative activity, and then it, we can measure a, an efficacy on uh, MRI, where we can count the lesion in the brain, then we count the clinical efficacy with a reduction of the relapse rate and at the end we can also measure the, the uh, efficacy of the drug on uh, disability. But as you can see in the second column, all this procedure take time and uh, also the number of patients that we have to study to see an effect is progressively growing. But what is very important is that if we measure the biological activity, we can have a measure in a few hours and in every single patient. And this is, of course, of paramount importance because the patients are going to the doctor one by one and not in group. And so what we'll do is simply to uh, give you interferon data and then ask the patient who came to our center, if he has done interferon beta the previous uh, evening, and if he answered yes, we can measure the level of the MXA. And uh, what we also can do with the uh, MS patient is to measure the presence of the neutralizing antibody. And uh, what uh, you can see from this uh, slide, what happened is that 
if the patients are never treated with interferon beta, they have a certain level of MSA. If they are treated with interferon beta and they don't develop neutralizing antibody, there is in the great majority of them a sharp increase of MSA. But if the patient who has a persistent neutralizing antibody, there is no more biological activity in the great majority of the patient. And uh, we can also, of course, measure the biological activity. And what we have done is after one year of treatment, and what is important is that, of course, the great majority of them show a biological activity, but one out of uh, five is without biological activity. And what happens in this patient? The uh, great majority of them has both neutralizing and binding antibody against interferon beta, but there is also a percentage of patients who have simply binding antibody, and there is a small percentage of patients who don't have antibody but don't have a biological activity. And the more uh, important reason for this small group of patients are patients who don't you, uh, use a drug and they need have to use it because to use interferon beta is uh, not uh, a comfortable approach. And there is a sharp correlation between the uh, level of the uh, neutralizing antibody and uh, uh, you can see that the patient who have a higher level of interferon uh, of antibody neutralizing uh, interferon beta, there is no more biological activity, but also patient with a low level of the neutralizing antibody and a reduction of biological activity. And uh, the presence of the neutralizing antibody uh, against the biodrugs is uh, a general phenomenon, and uh, these are some examples. So every time we inject a, 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 bio, a bio drug, we have to think of the risk of uh, induction of uh, neutralizing antibody. And for instance, this happens also for other drugs like uh, natalitumab that also be used in uh, uh, MS patients. So, um, another important point is that the level of the biological activity has a prognostic value. What we have done is uh, to measure, after one year of treatment, the level of uh, MXA and the presence of neutralizing antibody. And then we, have, uh, we follow the patient for three years and we measure the number of relapses of clinical relapses they have. And so you can see that the patient who has biological activity has a much lower chance to have a relapse in comparison to patients who don't have biological activity. And this group of patients we can compare to a placebo. And so in this way we can see that there are different categories of a non-responder patient. The first group are patient who for political or economic reason can't have the interferon beta. Luckily till now in Italy we can give the interferon beta but we don't know what is going on in the, in the future. And the second category is the patient who use interferon beta but they have a neutralizing antibody and so we can call this patient an immunopharmacological non-responder and of course also the patient that for some reason they don't use in the right way the drug. And then there are a large number of patients in which there is biological activity but for a pathogenetic, a pathogenetic reason the drug is not effective in our patient. And then we can measure, it. we can evaluate by MRI and clinical evaluation uh, the impact of the drug. So, in this way, we have different categories of uh, non-responder to interferon beta. And uh, uh, we have also uh, a, a series of good reasons to consider MXA as a biomarker of interferon beta biological activity. It's specifically induced by interferon beta and interferon alpha. What is important is not induced by interferon gamma, that when the patient has a relapse, there is an increase of interferon gamma. So this is important. 
then it is directly induced by interferon beta. There is a different level of expression between, between treated and untreated patients. The level of expression is influenced by the factor interact interacting with interferon beta, like neutralizing antibody. If uh, involvement in pathogenesis and, and or therapeutic action of interferon beta in, uh, in multiple sclerosis, there is a, a direct uh, um, uh, explanation of how interferon beta acts in, uh, in multiple sclerosis, but we know that it can modify factors that are important in the pathogenesis of the disease. There is a correlation between the level of MSA and the clinical course, and there, is, there are methods for quantification that are easy uh, and not particularly expensive. And that, uh, when there is no induction of MSA, all the other genes induced by interferon beta are almost also not, not induced. And that, at the end of the story, uh, the, the presence of neutralizing antibody and uh, also the possibility to measure the biological activity has allowed the production of a guideline, international guideline and uh, also Italian guideline. And, it, and nowadays we can follow this uh, protocol that allows us uh, to change the treatment in the presence of a high level of a neutralizing antibody or in absence of biological activity. This is a great advantage for the patient because we can change treatment, uh, give them something better, but it's also for the uh, national service something very important because in this way we can save a lot of money or at least to use better a lot of money. And uh, of course for interferon, uh, interferon continues to be something very important for MS patient. Now we have almost 15 different approaches to, to treat uh, multiple sclerosis, but uh, it's, uh, uh, in my opinion, and not only in my opinion, still a milestone in MS therapy because it uses uh, uh, physiological pathways. It is safe. We have more than two, we have about 20 years of follow-up in a large number of patients, and we can say that this drug is uh, really safe, and so the side effects are very, very few and, and not, uh, not dangerous. It is effective in slowing the disability progression. It is possible to assess the biological activity. Uh, and surely, a part of the patient are good responder to interferon, but of course we have still a lot of limitation. The first is that interferon is effective only in a percentage of the patient, and the objective of the future is the early identification of the responder patient. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Antonio. I wonder if there are any questions. I address it, please. Is there any uh, effect at all in AML, in, in myotrophic lateral sclerosis? AMS? Oh, yes, no. In a terrible disease, and it is not effective. Not at all. Not at all. And just to, uh, because my role is a chairman, just to take our message. Uh, if you have to say a final answer, which percentage do you think uh, or no response is due to and neutralizing antibodies development? I have my answer, I want to just to check if the same. So uh, it depends from the, the product because it's ranging from 3 to 20 percent. In the world, we, we have uh, about 10 15 percent that has a high cultural tendency mm. because there is also the chance that there are antibodies that can disappear. But uh, we never know how long it takes for the disappearance of antibody, and so we can't put the patient at the risk to continue drugs that is ineffective if we hope that the uh, antibody are going to Thank you very much, Antonio, and we will.